What's up guys, Matt and Blake from footballboots.co.uk and as you can see, we've got each Nike silo on our boot shelf which all come with different sole plates and stud configurations. So what we're going to do today is talk you through each one to let you know what they offer and also which one is best suited to you. So let's get right into the first silo by Nike. Alright, so the first sole plate we'll get into is the Tempo Legend 6 or Legend 5. Now the sole plate on the Legend 5, we have the Legend 5 limited edition boots here, They're really really nice boots, but overall the sole plate on the Legend 5 and Legend 6 is exactly the same. Now what we see on the sole plate is a TPU material, if I just bring it closer, it's going to be very very stiff, durable, and it's going to be quite good for a leather boot. Matty, what's the conical studs we see on this? So it's actually got two types of studs on this Tempo Legend 5, which is the same on the Legend 6. On the forefoot region, we've got very traditional conical studs, circular in shape, but then on the back, on the heel studs, we've got more bladed ones. So it's a bit of a combination between both, and this is actually one of the most popular and preferred kind of sole plates for professionals. I know that even some professionals out there, if they've got a different Nike model, they still want this sole plate so they get them custom made for them with this one, because as you said, it's very comfortable. Okay guys, so why does the Tiempo Legend have conical studs? If I just bring it closer there, you can see the conical studs there, all around the forefoot, two bladed studs in the middle, and the sort of, what Matt said before, those rectangular curved studs on the heel, just for extra stability. But yes, for overall stability and comfort wise, conical studs are the best. Now in terms of the size of the studs on the Tiempo Legend 6 or Legend 5, they're actually quite perfect in terms of size. They're not too small, they're not too big. Something like on the Everpower Vigor 1, it has really, really small and narrow conical studs, but this has perfect size studs for a full leather boot. So as Blake mentioned, the stud configuration and sole plate is very traditional and also in my opinion, I think it's probably the most versatile out of all of Nike silos. I think it is a very versatile sole plate. I don't think you can't not like it. I think it's very solid overall. Now one thing that we're gonna be doing is telling you our own personal favorite picks of the sole plate on all of Nike's models. So what one so far would be for you? I would actually go for the Team Pro Legend sole plate. Overall, just comfort wise, I'm a big fan of comfortable boots and definitely go for the Legend 6 sole plate. So Blake chooses the Legend 6 as his personal favourite pick. Wait to see what my own personal pick is because it is in this collection so stay tuned to see what my own personal pick is. But that's the Legend 5 and 6, so let's move on to our next Nike boot. Okay, so the next Nike boot we'll get into is the Magista Obra and the Opus. So the Obra and Opus have the same sole plate, it's pretty much a glass nylon PBEX design. A bit more flexible than what you see on the Tempo Legend 6. So if I just do that, it's just a bit thinner, a bit more flexible than what you get on the Tempo Legend. So yeah, so that's exactly it. I think the difference between the TPU and that P-Bax and the nylon is that it's going to be slightly more flexible, just like you said. Now one difference apart from the sole plate is the stud configuration. Mm -hmm. If you take that, the Legend 5, we can just see that these again have very similar studs, but they've got a little bit more bite because they're not all conical. Yes. They're almost like a half conical shape, and the biggest difference with that is you're gonna get more bite when you're making rotational movements. So they're sort of like conical, but they're not. They're sort of like teardrop, what you see on the XSM Plus Pure Chaos. Maddie's just bring it in close. But they're sort of like a half moon design, aren't they? They're not purely conical. There's some sort of bladed studs around that rotational traction system on the forefoot, but overall, that's sort of agility and comfort combined on that sole plate, whereas the Tempo Legend 6 is pretty much pure comfort. Exactly right. Now, one thing that I notice about the Magista Obra 2 and Opus 2 is it comes with that, as you said, 360 rotational bladed studs around the forefoot, yes. which reminds me a lot of that original 360. Now, that yes. CTR boot, yep. I thought they were a brilliant model by Nike, and that obviously was all about rotational traction for that kind of central midfield player like Iniesta, making quick pivots and turns, and that's exactly what that kind of region there offers you. Right. So Blake obviously said that his favourite sole plate was the Tempo Legend 5 and 6. This Magista Obra 2 and Opus 2 isn't my favourite again, so you have to wait and see what is. But Blake's going to move on to the next Nike Silo, which is... So perfectly to see the Hyphen Phantom 3 Silo, we've just got the sole plate here. So I'll bring it closer. It's definitely different to the Magista and the Tempo Legend 6 sole plate. Now this is the Hyper Reactive sole plate. Pretty much the same sort of materials you see on the Magista in terms of P-backs and nylon. Stud system. What Stud system. Saying? So this is actually one of the biggest differences between this and the Magista range. We can see that it's actually got three types of studs, not just two, it's got three. We've got those hexagonal shaped studs on the medial side, which are going to be great for pivoting and turning. But then on the outside of the boot, we've got those chevron shaped studs, which we see on the recruit, which we'll bring in in a second. And they're going to be much more aggressive in terms of changing directly quickly and giving you a lot of bite. And then just to cap it all off, we've got those braking studs on the forefoot, just to make sure that you can brake with a little bit of acceleration, just to stop very slowly, very quickly, yeah. and then accelerate off. Now obviously it's a great thing to have three types of studs and they all offer something different. So what's the difference between the Hyphen sole plate and say the Magista sole plate? Again, I'll just bring it in close. You can see the two sole plates there, but on the Hyphen, you just grab that, 
On the high venom, it's designed for more flexibility in the forefoot. As you can see, it's got a few sort of gaps around the forefoot here. It's almost like split toe. You saw split toe on the first two generations of high venom, but now you see a much more aggressive sole plate on the high venom with the studs combined, a very, very aggressive agility sole plate. I think if you had to summarize it up, I think the high venom three would be a perfect combination of the Magista and the Mercurial. So they kind of crossed them together to give you a very versatile yeah. one. I think it performs really well too. But let's move on to the next one. So let's get into our next Nike silo, and it's the Mercurial. We've got the Vapor 11 and the Superfly 5. Now, what is the obvious biggest similarity between both models? Well, the biggest similarity is that they're exactly the same. The sole plates on both of these boots have that same contoured sole plate. So 40% lighter than the carbon fiber sole plate you saw on the previous Superfly. Out of all sole plates, this is probably the most aggressive, lightweight, Pretty much built for speed, isn't it? Exactly right. I think the word that you used there, which was correct, was aggressive. Honestly, I don't think I've worn an FG sole plate, which gives me as much aggressive traction as the Mercurial range. I think the Chevron studs, apart from being aggressive in shape, they're actually deceivingly quite long. You could almost wear these on kind of a muddy pitch as well, because they do have some depth to them, and they are so aggressive. I mean, I definitely wouldn't recommend wearing these on a 3D surface, because the traction just would be too high. You couldn't even kind of increase the risk of injury, just because they are so aggressive. But if you are a winger, and you want that kind of performance aspect, these are going to be brilliant for you. So just bring in the sole plate quickly. Again, you see the split toe on the forefoot here. The Superfly 5 and the Vapor sole plate is all to do with being contoured, so it sort of maps the shape of your foot underneath. Now it's the only sole plate by Nike which offers that contoured sole plate. It's 40% lighter, as I said before, than the previous carbon fiber, so that's already a good thing. Again, with the Chevron studs, the Brio cables, the Flyknit, all combined make this the most responsive boot by Nike. It definitely is the most responsive. Now one thing that you can really notice when they're on feet and also in hand is how that the sole plate itself is much stiffer compared to something like the Hype Venom or the Magista or the Tempo. If I just bring this one in closer again we can just see how flexible it is to give it a nice spring off. Now one thing about the Mercurial is it's going to be quite stiff which comes down to responsiveness which is the yes. word that we keep talking about it is responsive. We can just show here that it is a lot stiffer compared to the Hype Venom. Now the Superfly and the Vapor all have chevron studs. There's even chevron studs on the heel here. Now it's really designed for streamlined traction. It says something like the High Venom for the goal scorers. It's got chevron studs on the heel, chevron studs on the forefoot as well, as well as some hexagonal studs. Designed for more agility and speed combined. Whereas the Magista and the Tempo are really just designed for comfort. So if Blake's pick of sole plate was for the TMPO Legend range, my own personal favourite pick is the Mercurial. I love that high aggressive responsiveness feeling underfoot, and that is exactly what the Mercurial range gives you. Now, so the last sole plate slash innovation we'll talk about is Anti-Clog. Now, Maddie, you talk about Anti-Clog for us. So what Anti-Clog is, it's an SG sole plate, and it's not the stuck configuration that we're looking at, it's the actual material of the sole plate. Now, if I bring it in closer, it's actually made up of an adaptive polymer plate, which just means that the water and the mud combined on that sole plate is going to repel. So they're not going to become clogged, which it gets its Anti-Clog name from. Now, the sole plate itself on the Anti-Clog, you'll see it on the other Anti-Clog, like on the Superfly and the Vapor now, you can get a Vapor Anti-Clog now, as well as the Medusa and Tempo. The sole plate on the anti-clog is actually different than what you get as a standard sort of nylon PBX or contour chassis. So there is one absolute standout issue with the anti-clog sole plate and Blake's going to take us away why. So the Vapor and the Superfly is all about this contoured sole plate but when you put an anti-clog sole plate on the Vapor or Superfly then you have problems. So the Vapor and Superfly is all about responsiveness but when you put a sort of stiffer anti-clog sole plate on the Mercurial it just defeats the purpose of the boot. You know, like Brio cables, especially on the Superfly Brio cables, work with the laces and the flyer and the speed ribs just to make it really responsive to make your feet attached to the sole plate pretty much. But when you've got the anti clog sole plate, it's a different story. So that's just the one downfall of having anti clog on your Mercurial boots, as well as Hybridum and Magista as well. But is it worth the price? I don't think it is because they do charge a lot of money. So in my personal opinion, I'll just go for the straightforward SD Pro. Yeah, so this is the standard SD Pro. Yeah, so metal conical studs with blades. That's pretty much the perfect sole plate in my eyes. You probably don't need anti-clog. You're paying the premium for an anti-clog boot anyway. So guys, as a wrap up of the sole plates and which one is going to be best suited to you, if we're talking about if you want traditional comfort and very versatile sole plate, then the TMPO Legend 5 and 6 because of the same, it's going to be the one for you. Now the Magista Obra or Magista Opus pretty much is all about comfort with a bit of agility combined with those sort of half moon shaped studs. 
Hyper Venom. The Hyper Venom. So if you want more of a modern day innovative soul plate, this thing will be brilliant because it gives you that kind of pivoting rotation, but also some bite when you change direction as well. So I do think this is a very good one, maybe one of the best at the moment. Now for the Mercurial, it's pretty much all about streamline acceleration. Speed pretty much is all, with, all to do with the Mercurial. Chevron studs everywhere and the anti-clog. So the anti-clog and the SD Pro, you wear them when the ground's a little bit muddy and wet. If it was for me, I would just go for the standard SG Pro because I feel like if you're going to slip over in a game of football, you're still going to slip over no matter what the sole plate is. I don't think an anti clog is going to stop you from actually slipping over. It just makes them a little bit easy to clean. I think if you really break it down, they're an easy boot to clean. Simple as that. So guys, that wraps up our sole plates and stone configurations from Nike. Vote in the poll card now for your own personal favourite and let us know in the comment section below why. Thanks for watching guys and as always, we'll see you next time.